Okay, right, guys, so what long bones make up the knee joint? Huh? Give me a bone that makes up the knee joint. Tibia. Okay, so we got, I heard tibia. Which bone is that? Smaller one? No, no, it's the top. Long bone. It's a long bone. It's like right. Medium. Is it the upper or lower leg? Lower, lower leg. leg. Is it the bigger bone of the lower leg or the smaller bone of the, upper, of the lower leg? Smaller. It's the smaller leg. It's, it's the bigger bone of the lower leg. Femur? Yeah, fibula. Femur is the what bone in the body? Longest? Shortest? Fattest? Longest. 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 If it's a long bone, it's going to be what? Longest. Longest. All right. It's the upper leg? And then somebody said before the fibula. Good. All right. Yesterday we started talking about the joints of our body. What do the joints help us do? Move. 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 Good. We have a couple different types we were talking about. What is one of them? Um, elbow. Oh, you talking about? Oh, so we have the pelvis. Did I say that one? Pivot. Pivot. Yeah. Pivot joint. Okay. Where do we find the pivot joint at? In our wrist. In our wrist. Ball, ball and socket. Ball and socket joint. Where do we find a ball and socket joint? In our shoulders. Ball and socket. And our shoulders and our no, hips. Shoulder? Yeah, hips. And our hips. Because I can do this, right? Yeah. If this was a ball and socket, I can do this. And the hinge. If I make my knee do this, <laughs> they cart me off in a cart and take me to the operating room because this shouldn't move like this. And how are some people double jointed? Double jointed is a misnomer, okay? Our joints are directed. Thank you. Double jointed is a misnomer. Your elbow is one joint. Okay? But it only goes one direction. Some people can make that go a little further though, right? So if I just quickly drew, here's our, here's our hand, and here's the elbow, right down there. It only goes in one direction, right? You have two bones there, it only goes to what? This way, right? Yeah. So from here to here. Are we, are we talking about the hinge or not? It's a hinge joint. Yeah. So the hinge only allows us to do what? One way. Go one direction. One way. For those, everybody who says we are double jointed, that means that instead of it going this far, it might go, let's just say, that far. Just a little beyond what we think. It means your arms break easily then. No, not necessarily. Actually, sometimes it gives you more ability to take some shock. So if I can go like this, all right, come on up here, we'll use you for an example. So, so Ryan has graciously demonstrated. So he's extended his arm, correct? Yeah. It doesn't go any farther, right? Right. Unless we watch Steven Seagal movie, right? Right. We just snap and make it, and he yells and screams. Now, if we hyper, meaning more, extend, it hurts. Because it's not going where? It's going past his limitations. There you go. That's his limitations. This is where it goes. It goes one way. His joints, we go one way. So double jointed would mean that we can go a little bit further, but there's no, there's not an extra joint. It just means that that joint is a little more flexible. Thank you, Ron. We got you. So is that what I have in my legs? Because like my knees. Some people can take their legs and go like this, yeah. and it looks like you're like an alien because your knees all bent back in funny way. People do it with their shoulder blades. Oh, my shoulders are bad. I had operations on them. So they make all kinds of funny noise and things kind of pop out and move. It's kind of weird. So our elbow is one joint. And Yanni, you were saying it was what? The hinge joint. The hinge joint. And the hinge joint moves in what direction? One. One direction. Good. What's another joint we talked? The ball and socket, right? Yeah. So it looks like we have a socket. And there's the ball inside here. If you get confused with it, if you know it's a ball, all right, you're like, okay, test time, hinge joint, pivot joint, fixed joints, oh, that one, that ball joint or something like that. If it's a ball, it's got to go into something, okay? Like your knuckles? The skeleton, look here. Look at the femur. 
there's a ball on the end of the femur, and it goes into the socket. And it moves around like this, okay? It allows us to do what? Flex. Flex and move in how many directions? Multiple. Multiple directions, okay? Good. We talked about another joint. Which one? Yana, you said it first. Pivot? The pivot joint. That's the wrist, ankle, and forearm. Okay, so we have wrist, ankle, and I like to say the forearm because of what? When we move that, we see it move up in here. Okay? So it's kind of a whole process. Which way does the pivot joint move? Two ways. How would we say? Rotation. It kind of rotates, okay, but it rotates in one direction. Now, see my shoulder? Yeah. It goes here. I can go here, here. So that's all multi directions. Yeah. My wrist can do this, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it can move, say, left and right, or pivot left and right, like a basketball player. They get the ball, they can only do this, right? Yeah. They can pivot. One direction, all right, or two directions, depending on how you want to say it. But what can happen? It can't go as far. It can't go over. Yes, it can't go as far. So I can pivot here. I can pivot here. But as soon as I do this, what did I do? You want to stop the line. I get a penalty call with me because I traveled. <laughs> all right. So the wrist, ankle, and forearm gives us movement in limited directions. Good. What is the last one we talked about? And you only have it when you're a kid. Skull. In your skull. Good. Cartilage. So, what do we call this joint? No, the joint, not the bone. Fixed joint. Fixed joint. Good. So we have your skull, and we have all these little plates. Is this an adult skull or is or is this an adult skull? Which one would you say is an adult skull? That's an adult. The first That's a one. This is an adult. Good. And this is a child? Yeah. Because what has not happened? The skull yeah. hasn't came together yet. It hasn't it developed. Hasn't really Good. So all those soft bones? that are not connected together, what's that process called? We call it in the last chapter. And the bones and cartilage becomes bone. Oh, uh, what? Ossification. ossification, another name for it. Calcification. Calcification, good. So this joint has become fixed, okay? <laughs> or immovable. What are those lines called? What do we call them? It's like stitches. Looks like stitches, and that's where the name came from. We call them cracks. What we got? <laughs> Sutures. Sutures, good. When you go to the doctor because you cut your hand, okay? They stitch it up. We call it stitches. The doctor has a fancy name for it. It's a Sutures. And those bones fuse together. And now everybody take your hands and link your fingers together. Not cracking up with that. That would not be good for that, that joint right accident. now. Now, pull your hands apart and look at your hands. Do you see that little connection? Yeah. Where they're like melted together almost? Yeah. That is what's happening here. Okay? Those bones come together. And once that joint fuses, it fuses for life. And we don't have any other problems. Good. So, we got the joints covered. And now we'll start today on the spine. Mr. Wilson. Yes. One of my brother's friends had that. Like, it's stuck together, though. Which one? Like, it's like that. His like, hands? Mr. Yeah, his hands. Like, was he born that way? Yeah. He was born that way, and yes, he was he's saying, like, spread. his mother was talking to my mom. And was it his hand, or not his hands, not like this? It was his hands like that. Like, At birth? Yeah. Wow. Sounds like uh, disease. Did they pull him apart? 
It sounds like no, a disease called he stereodactyly. He still has it. He's like 30 something right now. He still has it. They don't. They didn't separate him. No. That's bizarre. Yeah. No. Okay, guys. So, new notes. This stuff we start taking down. Bones of our spine. Is our spine one joint, or one bone, or multiple bones? Multiple bones. Multiple bones. Good. We gotta write this. Yes, please. What do we call those bones? <laughs> what do we call those bones? It goes back to middle school science. We have mammals, and if you have a backbone, what do we call that group? Vertebrates. Vertebrates, good. Okay, that's one individual bone. That makes up our spinal column. We're going to bring out our broken skeleton. Let's see if I try not to break her any more than she already is. Now, if we look at the back, all right. Kind of look like a dinosaur. You have little spines on the back, right? Mm -hmm. And if we look in the front, we can see, we can visualize all those individual vertebrae. Today, we're going to talk about those individual bones. So, the spinal column is made up of many vertebrae. What does our spine do for us? It helps us stand up and like bend down. So, it helps with our shape, right? Yes, Mr. Helmore. What else does it do? So, if we didn't have no, it, not, we couldn't. I thought you were going to work. Out. This is oh. right in this room. I'm sorry? We couldn't walk at all. Like we, didn't we couldn't because I'd be all slumped over, right? It's not over there. At, at best, yeah. I'd be all slumped over. So it goes back to helping us with movement. Right. What runs down our spinal column besides the bones? Um, connected to our neck. Our neck. What was that? What's connected to our brain? The cervical cord. The Not the cervical cord. The, the spinal cord. Oh, yeah. What else do bones do? Remember the functions? What was one of the functions of the skeletal system? Yeah, I will. Okay, what else? Okay. Protection. Protection, good. So, protects our spinal cord. If our spinal cord gets injured, what could happen? Well, can we get paralyzed? Paralyzed, good. Isn't that what happens to Superman? Yes. <laughs> Yes, it was. He fell off his horse. He had a horse accident. He fell off the horse. Superman. He broke his neck. Uh, Christopher Reeve. He played uh, in the seventies and the eighties. He played Superman. He had a horse accident. Fell off the horse. Fractured his spine. Damaged his spinal cord, resulting in this big word. Paraplegia. Paralysis. Paralysis. Yep, paralyzed. Now, depending on where you injure your spine will dictate what is paralyzed. He injured it extremely high in the neck, okay, in the cervical vertebrae, and we'll talk about that in a minute. He is a quadriplegic. That means he lost all the ability to move his arms, his legs, and his ability to breathe. That's why he had that tube in his throat. And he was hooked up to a ventilator. That machine breathes for you because he damaged that part of the spinal cord where the nerves that tell you to he breathe, can talk, though, right? he can still talk. Yeah, but he couldn't breathe. So he can't move at all? He has somebody like. He was wheelchair bound, completely wheelchair bound. 
He couldn't even scratch his head. How did he move his wheelchair? How you gonna tell yourself you can't move your hand? Electronically. Was, he had like a little bit. If it had happened, I would have told him to move down, guys. Love. He was able to move with a small controller. He had like a little bit of finger movement, and he could drive it. And I think that there was a mouthpiece. A lot of quadriplegics have a mouthpiece because they can still move their neck, so they can move it with a small little lever, like a little joystick, and they can go forward and back and left and right with it. Are you talking about that guy, Steve Hawking? Yes. He's still alive. Oh yes. Hawking's here. He's not talking about him. Brilliant. He died in 2006. Six, yes. Okay, so. We've talked about the function, protects our spinal cord. Do not even No, I won't. Gives us shape, helps us move, because our skeleton, is our spine part of our skeleton? Yes. What part of our skeleton? There's two parts. Is it axial or appendicular? Axial. axial. Why is it axial and not appendicular? Because it just is. Nice. <laughs> it's, it's true. It is. It just is. It is. But what do we call these? And don't say arms and legs. I was just about to. <laughs> I know where you were going, Yana. I was thinking. Ligament. Go picture that. If one is our axial skeleton, this should be our appendicular. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. So let's start with the beginning part of our spine. All right. Cervical spine. We have seven of them. <coughs> and they are listed as C1 through C7. Wait, are, we, are we doing like all of the bones in the spine? Yep. Uh -huh. Now, if you guys reach to the back of your neck, you'll feel a little bump on the back of your neck right about at the collar level. And if you run your hand down the back of your spine, you'll feel that bump. I thought that was like something that you get had a hereditary because like my father, his back is like... He's no, like, that, that little bump has nothing to do with it. He may have a condition called lordosis or kyphosis. That's an abnormal curvature of the spine this way, a hunchback. Or lordosis, <laughs> lordosis is where someone has, it looks like they have their butt sticking out and their spine, their lower back, the spine is curved it has a natural curve, but now imagine it like this. Yeah. Okay? And that is extremely painful. I mean, just sitting here like this, I can feel my spine bending in the wrong direction. Wait, doesn't the spine go all the way up like through your neck? Goes up to, right like to the base of your skull. Like right here? Yep. Okay. Now, we have two bones of the cervical spine that we really have to know importance, okay? C1 and C2. Now, does someone have their note pocket? Yeah. For the spine, the textbook one has a spine. What are the first two vertebrae called? The uh, cervical vertebrae and the thoracic vertebrae. Thoracic is next. We'll get to that one. But turn your page over. What are the first two vertebrae in the spine called? C1 and C2. Oh, um, depression for oh atlas and okay. axis. Okay. So which is which now? C1 is the atlas. Atlas. And C2 is the axis. axis. So right here, if you forgot a question and it said is the axial skeleton part of our spine, does the spine make up the axial skeleton, you should be like, oh, we got the word axis in here, so it's got to be. Who remembers, was it Greek mythology? I don't know. Atlas, who yeah. held up the earth? He held up the earth. That's He's like, you see the big statue of him holding up the world. Well, what's on top of C1? Ooh, sorry. No, no, what's on top of what's on top of C1? <laughs> Our skull. Our skull. So Atlas is holding up your skull. So if you get confused, Atlas holds up your skull. Or supports the skull. Now, both of these, okay? Of C1 and C2 is what allows us to do this. Everybody, look out the window. Everybody, look at the wall over here. All right, so what does it allow us to do? Turn. Turn right. our head, good.
Are we still just talking about the atlas is not the axis? No, that's both. Function of both. <laughs> because both of those sit on top of one another and do this. That's what allows us to do this. They're the only two vertebrae in our body that do that. Now, ours only go this far, right? I can't turn my head any farther this way yeah. or any further this way. How come an owl can do this with his head? Because it can. I don't know. I never asked. And, but it, it can't go all the way. It has to turn back around. It does have to turn around. Oh, uh, think of this. Their atlas has uh, no boundary. No, um, Let's just say that stopper? I'm going to put a stopper, say, here and here on us. And this is only to give you an understanding. If I put another bone here, okay, that fits in this area, it might have a stopper here and it might have a stopper here. So when it goes here and then this one goes here, what does it do when it hits a stopper? Stops. It stops. That's what I said. Okay. An owl <laughs> might have theirs maybe over here. They might only have one. And they might only have one. So they can go all the way around. And looks like, whoa. Did you ever see an owl completely turn his head? Yeah. It's yeah. kind of freaky, isn't it? Because their feathers hide their neck, so it's like... Not really. It's pretty cool. It is pretty neat, but it's kind of freaky looking, isn't it? How does their skin stretch? Well, they have enough skin in there under the feathers that allows it to move like that. Yeah, they're so, not just made of feathers. So that's what the C1 <laughs> and C2 do. Now, on top of that, we still have... Three through seven. Okay? Left over. Does everybody have this? Yes. Yana, you said it just before. What's the second part of our spinal column? The cervical, that's what you're talking about, or not? No, no we just did the cervical. So oh, the be? thoracical? The thoracic. Yeah. The thoracic spine. Good. What does that, what cavity is here in our body? The ribs. Our ribs are here. Yeah. And we talked about, I don't know if you were here, Yana, for that. When we had the body cavities, the thoracic cavity, we have the abdominal cavity, we have the cranial cavity. These are spaces that hold certain things. Well, the thoracic cavity aligns with the thoracic spine. And we have how many of them? 12. Oh, God. They're identified as T1 <laughs> through T12. Here's the good thing. We don't give them all other fancy names. So when I say, how many bones are in the thoracic spine, what's the answer? 12. 12. How many bones are in the cervical spine? Seven. Seven. Yeah. <coughs> so I'm not going to sit there and say, Yana, what is T4 called? T4. Sink my battleship. That's what it's called. T4. <laughs> and then what would be the next? And if you're like me, you have a bad back because of this. The lumbar. Lumbar. Lumbar is stuff that the man chops down. <laughs> lumbar <laughs> is here. <laughs> now. There's a couple of schools of thought depending on the textbooks that you read. Yana, what does our textbook say for lumbar spine? How many bones do we have in the lumbar spine? Um, two, three, four, five. Five. And there's a... Chris, Puerto Rican girl? Yes. Kristen, are you Puerto Rican? Oh, I'm my God. Puerto Rican. <laughs> yeah, All right. I'm not Puerto Rican. Oh, you get five extra points for that. <laughs> so... We go L4, L3, L2, and L1. So that's our low back. Lumbar, low. That's why it's so quiet here. Now, all of these bones, okay, make up the spinal column. Anybody heard of a pinched nerve? Yeah, All right, in your neck, in your back, okay? Like if you try to move it, it hurts. Oh, it, it like tells you to. It, tell, it tells you no, you're not moving. You're like, nope, I'm not gonna do it. Now this spinal column here doesn't depict it, but.
but we have If this is a disc, okay, and then we have our spinal bone here, okay, I'm just going to put this as a big picture here. We have a nerve that comes out here and a nerve that comes out here, and it's connected to what cord? <coughs> the spinal cord. So, out of every one of our vertebrae, we have two branches of nerves coming out, okay? One for the X. left side, one for the right side, okay? So if we pinch this nerve and we squeeze it and we make the spine do this, what happens right here? It gets stuck. It gets stuck and it hurts, okay? Everybody, really quick, you can experience this very briefly, is grab inside of your hand. There's a big nerve root on the in inside of your hand, all right? Yeah, my, my grandfather used to do it to me. Yeah. And if you push on that gently, don't do it really hard, you can feel that, okay? That is the nerve trunk that's coming out from your hand. If you do it really hard, it hurts even more. So it's a pressure point. It is a pressure point. If you have a headache, sometimes that will help the headache go away. So if you just gently massage it, sometimes it helps. But that's what you're doing. You're pinching a nerve. And for, good thing is, we can do what? We can let go. Okay. With the spine, if we get an injury, it doesn't. I jumped out of planes for years in the service. My spine is all messed up. That's scary. It's oh, it's not fun. Is that from the parachute? No, it's from me landing. <laughs> That's been going like this. Boom. Okay. Aren't you supposed to roll? Not anymore. You don't have to. If your shoe breaks, you have to roll and hope you, you do it right. What do you got, Bailey? What were you doing when you were doing that? Like, were you studying something? No, I was in the military. Oh. Yep. My brother has to do that. Jumping out of plane. Wait, it's not fun. He showed me a picture of him doing the backflip out of the Yep, out of the planes. <laughs> okay. So, this is what gives us our pinched nerves. Okay? Now, anybody ever crack your back? Yes. I have to step on it. And yeah. sometimes it feels good. We hear it go snap, crackle, and pop like some Rice Krispies. Sometimes, when we do this, it feels better, doesn't it? Yeah. Sometimes we are putting everything kind of back into alignment. Now, here's the problem with us doing it. We could. Do this. Do what? Pinch a nerve. Oh. Now you go to the chiropractor, you go to your massage therapist, and they do what to you? Like the back. They might do it, but they do it on a table. Mm -hmm. They have you adjust it so you're in a proper position. Because if I do this, if I were to, say, have my lower body pulled and my upper body turned, and then I recompress, what could happen? You could break it back. I can pinch this. Think of, think of this. If we're looking down, all right. And you can't stop the pinching. <clears throat> Our vertebrae say they're all out of whack. If I if I align all of these, what shape do I get? Square. I get a square. And I don't see anything else because everything else is is aligned. But if I take them out of alignment. I could do this, and that can cause pain, okay? So, we've got cervical spine. Anybody get a zinger or tingling in your hands? Yeah. Does okay. hand fall asleep or something? Well, that's some of the, usually the nerve in the upper arm, but all of the nerves in our arms and our shoulders, top of the shoulders, come out of our cervical spine, okay? So it just gives us locations. So if I were to hurt, let's just say C6, okay? I might have problems on the top of my arm because that nerve covers this part of the arm. And I'd be like, Mr. Bauman, is it six? Six and seven. Six and seven. So he gets it here and here, okay? And it's only on one side. If it's really, really bad, it could be on both. And that usually means that we've done this. Here's the nerve and I just squash the whole thing. Or I might be pinching only one side. So what side in this, in this picture should be causing you pain? Um, 
This side or this side? To the right. Left. Your left. Oh, you're right. Where's it being pinched? Where your thumb is. Oh, yeah, um... Window side or... Window side. Because it's... This one has got no okay. compression. Yeah. But if I do this, what happens? Both, Both sides. Okay. So when you have a severe injury, what do you got, Tiff? I have a question. Sure. When, when you sit up for a long time and your back starts to hurt, why is that? Because we are the only animal on the planet that walks around on two feet all the time. And we're not really designed for that. So if I stand up, where does all the weight get put on? My feet. On your feet, eventually. But where is it going down? Your head. Right down the spine. No, gravity is not our friend. Right? Gravity so this is why we're also the only creatures on Earth that have the ma majority of back problems. So that's why we sit down. For, that's why we sit down. When we get tired, we sit down. And it feels better because we take some of that pressure off. And what happens? When do we even feel even better? Because we sleep. Down. Laying down flat. Yes, when we're sleeping. Uh -huh. Laying flat. Um, when I'm in my room, sometimes I sit up for a long time to do something, mm -hmm. and then when I lay down, I can feel. Right, it takes but a little tension off. If if that's the case, how come when we've been down here? What do you when, mean? When I've been down there, <laughs> when I picked something up. Ah, Ooh. so you do one of these, and you just ah, right? <laughs> because how are we supposed to pick things up? I don't know. And when you, and when you guys get out of school and start working. Every business has a safety thing that you have to go through. So they're going to talk about safety in your workspace, which means, and they always do this, they make everybody look foolish. They say, here you go. This is a 100-pound block. How do you pick it up? And someone goes, oh. And they're like, er, wrong answer. You guys what? They want you to... You see what my back is? I'm, do, I'm all twisted, aren't I? They yeah. want you to use your legs. So they want you to get down, square. See, my spine is what? There's plenty. My spine is what? Curved. Straight. Yeah. So I can come here, pick it up, and my legs did the lifting. Mm -hmm. Not, oh, there we go, my back's <laughs> out. I can't move. I take a sick day. Okay. <laughs> so that's why they do that. Because they track all those. At work, and you're like, well, Yana's always taking days off because she's always lifting. Whenever she's in the boot in the room picking up boxes, she takes a sick day. So we look at the video and we see Yana picking stuff up like this. Oh, picking it up, and now we know why she gets hurt. Now, Ryan, on the other hand, works in that same spot, and we got him on video. He's picking up the box, putting it where it needs to be. Of course, Yana's all whole thing. And go across the board. <laughs> So, and it's not to get you in trouble. It's to figure out why is this injury happening. Yeah. So, that's why this part of our spine is important to know about. Because it's not just, why do we need to know about this? So when you get older and grandpa's talking about my back pain, what happens? Because he's picking up stuff, bro. Long time to stuff. For me, when my grandkids eventually Say, Grandpa, why are you walking around like an old man? Because I am an old man. <laughs> and I jumped out of planes for a living early in my younger days. So, tonight, review the cervical spine. Tomorrow, I have you guys tomorrow, correct? Yes. 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 We'll do a quick review on this and the overall joints. And then we'll talk about this again. And then we'll look at bones of the skull and how they interact now with the spine. Because the skull sits on what? Your axis. 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 And the atlas, right? Yeah. Which one is which? The atlas holds your head. Atlas is number one, C1. Yeah. It holds the head. Is what it sits on. Good job, guys. All right. Wrap it up. Bell's going to ring in a minute, and we'll be all set. Mr. Will.